Hello, everyone. So welcome to a deep and meaningful conversation. You are listening to myself, Anthony Brown. Um, I have a special guest with me, Crop. Crop is a musician. Um, I used to work for Crop as a salesperson. You could say I used to help him distribute his music albums to people on the street in London. Um, I've heard his music. Um, I'll actually leave some of his music in the link in the description of this video. So any of you are interested in conscious music, you can check out his, uh, his music. Yeah. So without further ado, I've got Crop. If you want to just say hello to the guests. Hello, people. What's going on? My name is Crop. Here to this, have this conversation. And uh, yeah, me and, me and Anthony, we've known each other for quite a few years now, like back in the day selling CDs and just moving music and stuff like that. So yeah, man, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's good. Um, and me, um, you know, this podcast, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to be talking about positive thinking. I'm sure a lot of you have come across this um, term within the self-help environment, the self-improvement environment, especially on YouTube. A lot of motivational speakers are promoting this idea of positive thinking. Now, this podcast, I want to focus on the idea of, of not ignoring the negative and facing reality. Um, so let me just ask you um, first, what do you think about positive thinking? I mean, does it change? Does positive thinking change your reality? I think that um, what you were saying before about ignoring the negative, I think that the negative that you perceive is an indication of something that you need to have your attention to. So your body and your feelings is so saying to you that this thing here is not working. Something is going wrong. Something needs a change. So, so you can't ignore the negative. So you need to understand what's happening. The way that I think about it, you want to try and understand what's happening and use your intellect to try to find a solution to that problem. You cannot ignore the problem. But I think that positive thinking is a start, but it is not the be all and end all. You need to have a positive action as we need to manifest something, we need to do something to create change. So and, yeah, um, that's what I what, think still. Yeah, very, very powerful response there. Do you do you what do you think happens to somebody if they only use positive thinking? You know, if there's somebody, okay, yeah, he's just, yeah, yeah, he's got to get headphones. headphones. Yeah, headphones, yes, it, it comes through a lot clearer. I was thinking, yeah, so he crop was just talking about positive thinking alone doesn't actually help. If you're going through a situation, then, you know, facing it head on is the first step and taking action is going to enable a change to happen. And then I was just about to ask crop basically, um, does positive thinking alone change your reality? And from his perspective, um, what do you think? Crop, can you hear me? Second, my brother. Oh, yeah, you just check in. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So there's a few little kickbacks in this. Music no. Phone, so just bear with me two seconds. Okay, yeah, just get this stuff straight. He's sorting out the audio. Well, so everyone, he has again, you are listening to Anthony and you are listening to my special guest, Crop. This is a deep. And meaningful conversation podcast. Uh, I have a special guest, crop musician, artist, and conscious thinker. If I can attach that to you as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I wanted to ask you um, again: positive thinking alone does that change your reality? If if does that do anything by itself? That technique. I think, like I was saying to you just before, we've had a, we spoke about this a little piece before, but I think that positive thinking is the start of a transformation in your head. You, can't, you cannot ignore the negative because the negative is giving you an indication that something is not right and something that needs adjusting by your own feelings because you're the one that's the person that's perceiving the problem or perceiving the energy that you're feeling a negative vibration or a negative emotion. So you need to, I think that you cannot ignore the negative. So you need to address what it is that you perceive as being this thing that's negative and work towards a positive way of dealing with it. Like you have to have action. Yeah, you have to move with action as well as thought. The thought alone is not going to completely change your reality, but it's going to be the start of something. 
but it needs to be led up with a positive action. That's the way I think about it. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, that's very interesting. Positive thinking is a start, yes, and and the negativity is an indication that positive positive thinking can actually change that negative situation. I mean, what do you think about anyone who uses positive thinking alone, though? If they think, if they ignore, basically, let me approach it a different way. If they ignore a negative situation, so let's say they have somebody who is um, harassing them or they have financial problems, like large amounts of debt, and they just think, you know what? I'm actually just going to be trying to not focus on this. I'm going to ignore this. And I'm just going to think positively. Mm. I'm just going to take on affirmations. Like maybe they're going to take on affirmations that I am going to get myself out of this situation. I, this reality is not real. Uh, You know, there's a lot of these affirmations. Wow. Yeah. But um, I think you don't want to take things out of context. I think, I think, the way of positive, I think positive thinking is mainly trying to be an idea towards not thinking negatively about everything. Like you've got Hollywood stars that are millionaires and they don't, they're depressed and they, they don't like their life. They've got everything, but yet still, they still feel this thing that they've, they're not happy with themselves. They're not happy with the situation. Mm. They're not happy with this and that. And that's through their own perceptions. So I think the idea of positive thinking is to try to see your reality for what it is but not negatively look on it like on it on every aspect that you can just by doing that but i think if a person is ignoring like signals and signs that things are going wrong or these negative things are happening in their life and they're trying to use affirmations i think that that alone is not going to completely change your reality no i think that it is a start i think that after the seed has been has been seeded that you're gonna try to analyze the situation see what's happening try and move towards and a sort of a way to deal with that problem because you can't ignore the problem because you can already sense it your body's already taking your, your body's already perceiving something as negative so your body's already setting off a signal that this is this is a problem So you can't ignore that. Your body's giving you a signal. So then you need to think to yourself, what is this? How do I deal with it? And how can I move past this and sort out the situation? You can't just hope for something to just magically fix your reality because it won't. Only you can do that. And you can only do that by making action. Action is very important as well as thought. Thought is the start, but action is the manifestation of thought very interesting yeah the thought is the is you know it's the manifestation um where's the starting block and then manifesting those thoughts is the action that changes the reality itself and i suppose is is there any other techniques people can use to change their reality beyond once they've once they've initiated that process and they've seen a problem what else can they do do you reckon to help change their reality if they even want to change their reality, if they want to make any changes? Well, I think part of this, like your perspective as well, like everyone, everything's about perspective, the way you think about something and the way you feel about something. So if you want to change something, then you need to identify in yourself what it is that needs to be changed for the start. And only you can do that for your own self. It's a personal journey and it's, and it's, and it's only for you to, to make your own discoveries. Nobody can tell you what you can do to create a better world for yourself. They can give you seeds, they can give you ideas, they can give you insights, but ultimately it's only gonna be yourself that's gonna be able to do these things. So I think that meditation is good. I think exercise is great. I think creative things are great to exercise your mind, to, to learn trades or learn new things, uh, educate yourself. I think all these things are positive things for an individual. And I think if you're feeling any sort of part of your life that you think, oh, I need to change this, then I think that's an indication in your own self that you've already identified what you need to do by feeling a certain way about something. Yeah. That's yeah. the indication that, that okay, 
I need to change something about this. Yeah, the body, I think the body is very, um, is very uh, indicative of what's actually happening. That feeling that something's wrong, just a kind of weird feeling, sometimes in your mind as well, sometimes a depressive mood, sometimes a lack of motivation to do something, but which is forcing you to kind of focus on how you're feeling and what, you're, what situation you're in. So it allows you to think, okay, so why am I feeling like this? And then while saying why, you then analyze, you begin to analyze your environment and what situations you're in, you know, who your who your friends are, what relationships you're in, or what you're studying, if you're studying, mm. or what type of work you're working in. Um, and then it makes you think, hmm, okay, maybe I need to change this reality. And, and you know, you spoke about traveling and you wanted me to go into that. I can give my, I can use myself as an example. Basically, I was, I always wanted to do traveling. I always wanted to go on the long journey. And I was living in South East London in well, Campbellwell, basically, just in between Campbell Wharf Road up into Elephant Castle. And I stayed there for five years, but the last two of the five, I was beginning to become slight or oh, depressed actually about my ability to actually live some of the dreams. I was doing creative work, but I wanted to do a lot of traveling and I couldn't see a way of that happening. So I was, I decided that I wanted to change my environment. I also wanted to change where I lived. So I said, let me move. So I moved to East London into Hackney to sort of close to Dalston and, you know, Hackney hasn't got a good reputation, but where I was staying was, there wasn't really trouble anyway. Um, it was close to Dawson. It was quite nice, nice houses. It was in a townhouse. But anyway, long story short, I had the night. I had the neighbor of hell, basically. So this neighbor was very. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no! Literally, this person was oh, like. This, <laughs> this person was had mental. Definitely had mental problems. On, made your life hell, did it? Just not yeah. Just stay good. He was just like he. He was so like i don't know what he went through in his life but whatever it was he was in he was just projecting all of that onto me and to anyone basically so he would wake up seven in the morning blaze loud music like he's in a nightclub you know bang on my door even even make death threats it's even time (laughs) it's even time he threatened to kill me you know, because I would complain, he basically said, you know, if you complain about this again, wow. if you complain about me again, you won't be alive to do so. So. What? <laughs> yeah, that's what he was. That's crazy, bro. But this lead, this kind oh, of what man. I saw, because I've been on the spiritual that's pathway. It's crazy. It is crazy, isn't it? It's, it was, I couldn't believe I was going through this. And my friend was thinking, how the hell? Do you live next to Bro, someone? that's too much. Let me just grab, I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab a water real quick. Yeah, yeah, grab some water. I'm going to grab some Give me two seconds, well. my G. Yeah. Two seconds. I'm super thirsty. Sorry, man. So again, you're listening to um, a deep, you're listening to a deep and meaningful conversation. Um, this is your host, Anthony Brown. This is another episode of a deep and meaningful conversation. I have a special guest with you as you've been listening to any new listeners just coming in. His name's Krupp. Um, and we're having a conversation about positive thinking. And we're talking about the dangers of using that technique alone. Um, Why well, I'm basically proposing questions around this theme of positive thinking. And I've asked Krupp, does positive thinking alone change your reality? Um, he's implied that, no, that's just the first step. So once you know you want to change your reality and you're using positive thinking to look for outcomes, to change that reality, you then need to work towards changing that through action, which you have to discover for yourself. And I then delved into my own experience of my reality. So he's back and I was talking about um, a neighbor who I had, who was a toxic person and he was basically causing hell for me. And what happened is that I saw this person as a catalyst basically, because I've been on the spiritual pathway and I know that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that talk about the shadow self and the dark side and, 
and how your, you know, the inside reflects the outside. So, you know, the reality you're experiencing is a reflection of what's going on inside. And so I saw this as a kind of catalyst and maybe I would say God was pushing me, you know, if some people don't believe in God, you know, they might use the term universe or higher force, but I'm okay with the word God. So that force was basically pushing me by creating this up, putting this obstacle in my life in order for me to reflect on my dreams and say, look, okay, your reality has become so shit right now. And there is an opportunity for you to now actually go traveling. And there's no excuse now because you know, you yeah. can't say, Oh, I've, yeah, got yeah. A, I've got a secure place. I've got to secure this flat because mm. what flat are you securing with this person? This mm. next door to you. So, and, you know, and, and I had already that crazy situation. Yeah. So that was the catalyst. And, and then I went traveling. I just basically took, you know, the last few paychecks, and when I just started, I just jumped on a plane and went to Portugal. And that was the beginning of that journey. And it was just the first day, you know, I met this Australian guy. We went for a few drinks in Lisbon and, you know, we had a few conversations about life and whatever, had some laughs and it, it just, it just felt so different. It just opened up a new world, you know, staying in hostels, which I think anyone who's traveling is should do because you meet other travelers along the way when you stay yeah. in hotels I think hotels are more suited to holidays, mm. but if you're there trying to do the backpack mm. alone journey, then I think hostels is the one. So I just started wandering around Europe, basically. Um, went to Germany as well, went to Berlin, Leipzig, you know, a lot of art down there. So yeah, that's how it, that's how it really started, really. You know, that's how the journey started for me. So uh, that for me, that's my testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to not basically ignore the negative because the negative being an indication, like you said, from like you felt like God was pushing you to go and do something else with your life at that time. Yeah. And maybe it was restricting you. It would, be, it would have been completely restrictive if you just stayed in that situation and just wanted to just think positively about it and still stay in that bad situation. But you took yourself out of that and you thought, okay, this is an indication that I could be doing something better. I feel like this is a time for me to explore I want to go here I want to go I want to meet people I want to do different things and then you took yourself in and you enjoyed yourself and then you had this awareness to yourself and so yeah man I, I agree with you man there's like you can't just use positive thinking alone you have to you have to have action to 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 reap the rewards of of uh, what you want if you really want to go for something yeah so, yeah man, it kind I see of what you're it kind of leads to that, you know, and what I, it, one of the other things I was talking about in the previous podcast that I wanted to ask you as well, um, the difference between healthy consciousness and toxic consciousness and what type of consciousness serves the human spirit. And this is down to perspective, but, and I just want to hear your perspective on that. I'm not going to start plugging in ideas, but how you what do you mean by negative consciousness? No, not negative. I said, what do toxic, you mean? What toxic. do you say? So, let me toxic. What, yeah, so what do you mean? By, so, mean so by that? the type of toxic consciousness, if we look at that as energy and it's coming from your aura, from your higher self, and when it goes into your brain, it's going into thoughts of causing harm to other human beings. Oh, I see um, what you mean. Going I, into I, see, I see more of going into, I was just gonna say, yeah, I was just gonna say, I feel like that's like just the, the duality of life like you're gonna have a bad side to you yeah. as well as a good side we all have great uh, we all have the possibility of doing great good stuff and we all have a possibility of doing really bad things like mm. that's what comes with choice as a as an individual especially as an adult you, you can do whatever you want and with your time and with yourself so i don't see that as like toxic consciousness i just see that as a duality an other side of a coin of the possibilities of what you can do with yourself so it's a choice then so you, if you're having those thoughts it's down to you to choose whether you want to choose to listen to those thoughts or whether you just want to well, of course yeah there's people like um, I mean, I mean, go ahead no sorry sorry it was cracking out there go ahead mother no go, i was saying ahead, my bro. Yeah, people like um, Alan Watts, if people know Alan Watts, the philosopher, he's, he's passed away now, but he's a famous English philosopher. 
when he was alive and he, he spoke about observing your mind and be, be an observer. So you have thoughts in your mind and thoughts are like clouds. They pass by. So don't really get attached to them. And so I, I've taken that as my, my strategy to kind of, I understand that if I'm having toxic or negative thoughts, all they are is just thoughts. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think just thoughts, as well, just, yeah. build, just building on that as well, some of your thoughts are not even like, like your own, like what Alan Watts says, like your thoughts, your own, or are they just a conditioned response to stimuli? You think they might not even be anything that you've actually got in yourself. They could be something that a parent's drilled into you or your work's drilled into you or your religion's drilled into you or your situation's drilled into you. And then this, these thoughts are in your head to do certain things. But is that really you or is it a conditioned uh, part of yourself that's been created in this way to make you, you feel that way? Oh, yeah. I mean, talking about conditioning, I'm glad you brought it up because, you know, living in this world right now, we're conditioned, you know, straight away, you know, school conditioned to, you know, get a get a degree, get a kind of edu- get pieces of paper and get, you know, graduated. So then we can now find a job in society. And that's all of that is programming, you know, it's clear programming, the religion programming as well, because God, for me, God does exist, but then there's now become uh, an in-between institution that wants to be in the middle and take the space of God and make you focus on the institution with a bunch of rules and regulations and their perceptions of what God is. And you need to fall in line to that before you can reach from their perspective the man upstairs which for me is not even a person you know it's it's more of a a kind of connection to a spirit which is inside you anyway so the conditioning is there yeah 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 Yeah, yeah. the conditioning is there and the thoughts you said that thoughts a lot of thoughts are not your own you know def 100 percent nah you're just things you you could have it's, it's even like um like parents and stuff like that like you might have a parent who somebody might have a parent who's like really narcissistic and they they beat their pet they beat their kid down into submission and make them think that they're their shit like oh you, you need to do this you need to do that and then a the kid grows up thinking that oh like i'm never good enough and stuff like that They're, those thoughts are not his own thoughts those thoughts have been placed into him by something else just like like um like advertisement almost like all right like you've seen at Christmas time, the Coke adverts always come up, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. And then you might feel to go and get a Coca-Cola, but you didn't feel to get a Coca-Cola before you saw that. And they just planted it in there, made it look nice. And, and you thought, you know what? I might get one now, but is that your fault or is that fault being planted into you? So I think it's the same kind of thing with, with when we talk about negative thoughts or negative uh, like things. They, they might not be your own thoughts. They might be something that's like... Uh, like as society or your parents or your friends or something that's been put onto you. Yeah. I think that does play a very huge part in thinking, you know, the advertisement is a big thing out there. Peer pressure as well. People listening to, you know, the group. Yeah. Peer pressure is massive, you know? And yeah. 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 It's, it's really big. And, you know, even now, what's going on now you know with the lockdown right now and and uh, the the guidance that we've been receiving onto you know what to do you know, wearing wearing masks and stuff there's a lot of peer pressure in that and every person i was saying yep. to someone the other day no one owns your body so no one has the right to tell you exactly that's what i was thinking yeah no one has the right to tell you what to put on no. top of your body or inside your body 100% Hundred so, percent, and those masks, masks have been proven not to even work anyway. That's another thing. Yeah, them things so don't even work. So it's just like it's more. I feel like it's a thing of uh, a way of seeing who's going to comply. It's almost take it like, all right, then now you when you get on the bus, you have to wear one. And so this is a new thing. All right, I have to wear a mask every time I go on the train. But I think. Breathe, the breathing, the way you're breathing them things is going to restrict the air flow to your head. You might be, do you know what I'm saying? You're not getting all of the natural bacteria because there's good and bad bacteria around and you're supposed to be as a human. We're supposed to be out here in the world. 
we're not supposed to be masked up and hardly breathing, not catching. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of it's fear mongering. And I think it's um, a way to kind of control in a very sort of sly way. Really. Yeah, and, it, and it's implanting. A lot of that is, again, it's nothing to do with you. It's not your thoughts. They've been implanted into you through images, you know, on the bus, you know, facial images, wear a mask, you must. And I think the language they use is, you know, they say this is guidance, but it's not law. And I think that if you listen to the language, you know, they say we're giving you, it's guidance, government guidelines, but it's not law though, is it? So it's not an actual law. They're not saying by law, you nah. must. Nah. You must comply. Nah, nah. You must comply by law. They're just saying these are the guidelines. You must do this. And with exactly. that, I just, yeah, I just don't understand it. I just don't get how we've come into this situation. You know, over the past six months. You know, I really feel that. You know, I think even see Sweden. I was I was reading up in Sweden. And Sweden didn't actually do any lockdown. Mm. And their country is not, you know, ridden with so many deaths. So that's an example. You don't have to lock your whole country down. And I don't think we had to have done that, you know. And I have the right to, I have the right and yeah, you have and the right been, to, express, been to express your opinion on this. That's the whole point of democracy, you know. And a lot of people, mm. they'd be listening and thinking, oh my God, how can you even discuss? How can you even dare? What do you mean? I have the right. But then as well, think about Anthony as well. Like, see, see this one, like, all right, so you need to wear masks, but no one's wearing gloves or they don't say you have to wear gloves. Yeah. So then when you walk into the supermarket, you're all picking up different things, putting them back. You like, do you know what I'm saying? Someone else comes and picks it up. And <laughs> so you're not really... There you go, bacteria can transfer You're not really onto... stopping it by just... Yeah, you know I'm saying so it can be transferred just like that. Plus, them things the doctors have said that those masks you you can only wear them for a couple of hours, and they wouldn't even they wouldn't even be a thing that could stop a virus anyway. Yeah, these those masks. Masks, There was a guy in Australia who put up a video on YouTube. I don't I've forgotten his name, um, but basically he he held the mask up and he sprayed deodorant through a number of masks, and it went straight through, especially these surgical straight ones. Straight through. So if I sneeze, mm -hmm. it's going all over your face anyway. So the mm. surgical masks are not effective anyway. And plus scientists, yeah. I've heard, there's a scientist I heard, and he's just said washing hands. He won't I think fan. it's the way. He's just said washing hands is effective because that's the contact mm. space. Touching surfaces, touching people is going to bring about bacteria or virus or whatever. And then you touching your face and touching your body and bringing it into your system is the hands. You know, but mm. you don't you don't headbutt the wall, you don't lick surfaces, it's your hands that touch these surfaces. So if you're washing your hands, then I think that's what's killing, you know, any sort of potential virus. So uh, why I do think as well that uh, Yeah. You go on, go on. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say like I, I think as well that wearing the mask will probably lower your immune system, which will probably make it more likely that you would catch it. If, if you managed, do you, if, do you know what I'm saying? If the virus is around and you managed to catch it, if, you, if you've lowered your immune system for months and months wearing this mask, restricting the airflow to your, to, your, to your brain, basically getting the right amount of flow and you're, not, you're being super careful about not being around anybody for months on end and then mm. wait till flu, when the flu season hits, and it's coronavirus is still guanine, and if everyone's been wearing masks for eight for months and months on end, if your immune system's low, you're actually going to be more likely to catch it. I think. Yeah, so it's oh, like, I would agree. Yeah, your mask. I don't know, the mask. The mask thing is crazy. Mm. It is like it's. It's, it's a crazy, know. crazy year, isn't it, bro? <laughs> yeah, 20, 2020. I don't know what has happened, but again, it's. I think it's just a big opportunity for a big change, really. Yeah, I think it's a shift. It's a big shift, you know. It's a big dystopian shift. And now we can see what's going to happen. We can continue and see where this dystopian reality is going to lead us, you know, or we can try and do something about it because it's, it's I feel like, you know, it's one of these futuristic films that we're living in now, you know, where we're just being told to, like, you know, take our temperature, 
you know, in some places. Oh, and wear a mask. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like the machinery that's used to do these things. I feel like it's mm. it, from a film in the future. I you heard know? that um, my, f- my friend went to the hospital the other day and they went straight away, oh, they pulled up some sort of like thing. It was like, we, we need to check your... We need mm. to check your temperature or something straight away. Some kind of like device, like yeah. we need to check your temperature, and it's just a bit like I don't know what they're doing, but something yeah, that feeling, that that feeling of just I mean, it's like you you're a, a kind of product now, you know. You're just a product. Yeah. You know, you're, you're being scanned. Yeah. You're scanning you, you know. We're checking your temperature, and then we're making sure that you're washing your hands or using hand sanitizer gel. And then we're making sure you're wearing a mask. And if you don't have any of those, you're not coming in. You know, you're being banned. You're being rejected. Crazy. Yeah. So I don't know where that's going to lead us. It's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, what do you think? It's a lot. lot. What do you think we have in store for us next in this year? Or do you have any thoughts? To to be honest with you, I don't think anyone could foresee (laughs) the changes of events that's going on at the moment. Like, I have no idea what's going to be happening. You just have to stay tuned into what's going on and just try and live your life (laughs) as good as possible and not get too tied up in all of the virus stuff. Because I do think a lot of it is about spreading fear, making yourself feel uncomfortable to leave the house, making yourself feel comfortable to see your friends. Every time you turn on the news, there's some sort of fear thing. Oh, someone else, this thing's here. Like It's almost like a poltergeist, an invisible uh, thing that's killing loads of people. And and I think the fear is, is... is the real killer because you don't want to be walking around in a state of fear. That's not good for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so we, you know, we've been talking about positive and negative thinking and, and facing reality. And I think that, you know, we can, we can do something about this, you know, and by resisting and questioning these things is, is how we're facing what's happening in order to bring about some sort of positive change, you know, instead of just agreeing with everything, because, on all, in every situation i'm i'm questioning this whole process you know as much as possible just to let people know that i'm not just mm. agreeing with everything without actually asking questions you know so i was going to say what do you think's behind the situation do you think there's anything behind the virus do you think that there's anything going on like what's your idea behind like uh, the whole thing do you think I think behind think it going on. I think behind the virus is is basically um, an agenda to control human behavior. If if you just yes, look, yes. because basically what happened is that when I just sat down and observed what happened through my eyes, it was just like. It's the first time I've saw how easy it is to control people because suddenly yep, yep. all it took was a news, a few news reports to make people panic and suddenly lock themselves away and suddenly think they need to wear masks. And, and the thing is, like it's been said by other people on different podcasts as well, they never really got people to wear masks in the heat of this. Mm. March. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they never did. So now it's kind of mm. done down. They're saying now wear masks, but back to what yeah. you're saying is there anything? That's his, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, they suddenly said, "Oh, you need to wear masks now." Um, when it's kind of died down now, and you've eased the lockdown, and you've got yes. everyone back into work. Yes, you know. Yes, it's and confusing because, yeah. like, I'm glad you mentioned that because because when the thing first dropped, I was I was like taking it seriously, mm. like I'm. A girl that I lived with, she was from Taiwan and she's been through China and she's lived mm. in Japan and in all these different places. And she knows what it's like when the virus hits. So when she came over here and, and we first got the virus, we were taking it seriously from the start. Like, yeah, but nobody else was taking it seriously. So I felt like I was a paranoid one like, oh, wow. taking it seriously at the start. But people were still actually dying at the start people were still actually dying. But what, what I found interesting was that 
the general population didn't take it seriously. Nobody was social distancing. People were just going out, just doing whatever they was doing. People were just hanging out in supermarkets and jamming up close to each other and all of these things. And then when the, when the media starts to get the scare campaign out and they start going, oh, like, da 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 like, okay, you, can't, you can only go out a couple of times a day, try and jog and try and get some exercise. Then they sort of, people started to slowly start to get paranoid and slowly start to get into it. But I was coming out of the idea of the virus being a crazy thing that's definitely going to just attack me if, I'm, if, I'm, if I go near somebody two metres uh, behind somebody or two metres in front of somebody. Oh, I'm going to catch it. Away from that, I've started to think, you know what? I, I, don't, know. I don't really know about this thing. And I don't know if this is, is, if this is serious as, as they're making out. I'm not sure if all the deaths that they're reporting are are legitimately down to COVID-19 or are they down to something else and they're hyping the numbers. I wasn't too sure. But then I started to see a shift with people. Everyone started taking it seriously. People start wearing masks. People are really starting to social distance. But when the thing first dropped, they said that it was going to have about, it should be about three months. People are going to die. There's going to, few, big, there's going to be deaths. It should sort of die down after about three months. You might get a second, uh, second wave, wave, possibly. Wave, yeah, yeah. Second wave, but then what happened? That it's like then everyone then it's just like been dragged out. It's been dragged out. It's been taken more seriously. The fear thing's been really hitting everybody. Everyone's social distancing and isolating, and that's causing other problems. Like in different countries, you've heard about people beating up their wives, loads of women dying and stuff. Uh, domestic people, violence locked in, in the house in the Latin domestic American violence. community has as skyrocketed, skyrocketed in South America. Mm. Because my partner's from um, Latin America, and she's told me about in certain countries, domestic violence has gone up dramatically. Crazy. Yeah, because people are not supposed to be locked in your houses. You're supposed to be. You we're social beings. We're people that be out talking to people, living lives, going to your work, doing your goals, going mm. out in the world. Mm. To, to, to be locked up into a box and saying that you can't can't leave, you can't see your friend, you can't walk, you can't jump, you, know saying you can't be near, near, near nobody in the shop. And to think in Sweden how oh, they didn't do any lockdown and they're okay. Mm. So, so then it's a few questions, isn't it? Yeah, all they did it's was distancing. Like... All they did was social distancing. And they didn't get this, you know, onslaught of deaths. They didn't they didn't mm. get it. They didn't get it. I haven't, got, myself, I haven't got the stats what, in front of me, but their numbers are extremely with, low. I had this conversation with my brother. Yeah. Yeah, you had a you had this same conversation mm. with someone else. I, I yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're tripping out a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I spoke to my brother about this, and he was saying that, like, so another thing, they didn't shut the schools, did they? That was a big one as well. They didn't shut the schools for ages. They didn't shut the schools, and there wasn't no crazy like deaths with kids or nothing like that. They didn't shut the schools for ages. They did the school go on and let people work and stuff like that a little bit so it's a bit like mm. and and are some of the deaths possibly down to other 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 things other reasons are they saying that some people have died from COVID-19 they didn't die, die from COVID-19 they might have died from something else yeah even it, even know. in the emo even in the really mainstream trust numbers can you? You got, even in the mainstream I watched the news report mainstream in Ireland an Irish MP was saying that there are people dying of different causes and they're putting down different, um, you know, someone's dying of, of heart disease and they're putting down COVID basically they're stamping COVID on different mm. deaths. And this is said by an MP. Yep. Even in, in Italy, there was, there was people in their parliament going crazy saying you need to tell the truth about what's been going on. And they were literally I'm thinking, wow, so even in the most mainstream official environment, there are people questioning this whole pandemic, you know, whether mm. it's, you know, where, you know, the statistics, the numbers, it, yeah, the, the numbers, numbers, the numbers, yeah, and it's like, who knows? I don't understand, you know, I do not understand any of this, you know, I don't it's even understand mystery. how viruses actually transmit, but the way they're going on is if it's airborne. And if it was really airborne, we would be dropping like flies. Airborne. So I breathe and you catch it. That literally, you, there'd be thousands of people dead. Imagine. 
airborne. Do you know what I mean? An airborne virus would just be <laughs> crazy. No, it's crazy. It, no. it would actually be crazy if it was really airborne in the yeah, way. Yeah, it's this. It's... <laughs> and I did think as well with with the Black Lives Matter thing as well. When 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 everyone was right, well, not rioting. When everyone was like marching and that and protesting. I expected to see a bit of a raise in the in the in the in the deaths because I was thinking, right, man, they're out there all oh, close yeah. and personal and that, right in the thick of the in the virus. I was thinking this sounds like a plot or something. Like I was thinking <laughs> this sounds like a setup. I was thinking they've done this so that so man, then we'll go out and then it's gonna be crazy for us. But but then there was no rise, and it, so I don't know. I got it. And I've, as well. With the with the coronavirus, I'm sure I did see somewhere that they said that coronavirus has been a virus that we've had on us for a long time. Like certain back certain bacteria has yeah that coronaviruses been there coronaviruses the coronavirus coronaviruses are actually normal. So then why did they... they're actually normal? So what... Because basically, let me just say that the Dettol there's a there's a bottle um, a Dettol all purpose cleaner, and on the back it says it kills the coronavirus kills coronaviruses. Mm. So it's it's there basically and it is a type of it's a type of flu basically you know it's a type of flu people out there need to do you know more of the scientific research i, I haven't got all the you know the stats to hand but you know i've what i've come across the information i've come across the coronavirus is is a kind of normal virus that's that's been among us you yeah. know basically in the same you know way, in the same way that flu is. i was gonna i was gonna say yeah, I was going to say, do you know why they changed it from coronavirus to COVID-19? Like the tagline? It's just literally just it. because... I actually don't. So it's 2019. Why did they change it? It happened. Oh, that why? It happened in, yeah, because corona and they changed it to COVID-19 because the year 2019. I think that's what it is. It happened, that it that happened in December. The they yeah, it happened in, that's it. December the 19th was the first case <laughs> in China in this Wuhan region. So it was, you know, December 19th, coronavirus. They took the two corona, put, named it as COVID is the abbreviation, and then put 19 because that's the first day. Um, sorry, the year. They put it on that. So, yeah. Because I was thinking as well, when, when China got it, they, they dealt with their situation well different. They was bleaching the floors. They, would, they had drones out telling people to go in their houses. They proper did the lockdown proper. But in our country now, lockdown weren't really a lockdown. Everyone was going out doing normal stuff for months or for weeks at least. Yeah, but so, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of glad that they, it wasn't in that way. And some people might be upset. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. They might be upset with me because, oh, you know, how could you say that? Well, I don't because I, I believe in, you know, I don't know, freedom and not to be completely locked down. I think that mm. the way we done it is yeah. actually ideal because I don't want to be locked down in the same way in Argentina where you have to basically get get permission from the police to go to the supermarket for three hours, and if you deviate from that pathway you go to prison. Well, you what they've done is confusing though, because they, they've not taken it seriously yet still now they're saying you have to wear masks when you get on a bus and a train. Yeah, it's weird that so they didn't take it seriously. And it's to do something that you have to do. Yeah, so then it's, it's kind of a bit like... Yeah, they, they basically didn't take it seriously and then they suddenly <laughs> said, oh, you must wear masks, you must wear, you must do this. It suddenly became, you know, that, a, mm, a big, big. So then that's problem. confusing, kind of. It's miscommunication, isn't it? It's miscommunication. Mm, you know, they didn't, they didn't. Yeah, it is miscommunication. But, you know, um, yeah, I think that basically. I think that's basically yeah, that's miscommunication, and I think we've reached. We've reached the, we've come to the climax. We've, we've come to the end of this podcast, I would say. Um, we've covered many different topics, you know, start off with positive thinking. And throughout, we can see that facing your reality, facing the negative is what changes it, you know. You know, even in this situation that we're in now, if we don't personally and, you know, as a group, as a humanity, 
face what's going on and make a difference by thinking and questioning our own self and asking questions and looking and finding what's really going on, finding the truth. If we don't do that and we just agree, then, you know, we don't know what's in store for us. We don't know what's going to happen, you know? So yeah, you've been listening to Anthony and crop on a deep conversation. So thanks for listening. And yeah, I look forward to listening to you guys um, again. Well, rather I could look forward to you guys listening to us and listen to me and other people in general, you know, um, you know, basically subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already subscribed, um, you know, let me know what you think, leave some feedback, but yeah, it's good to listen to you, you know, um, crop and, you know, that was a good conversation we had. So I appreciate everything, you know, you, all the input you, you know, put inside. And if you want to do another one, let me know, you know, it's a good conversation. Thanks for having me on, man. Thanks for having me on, bro. You're welcome. You're welcome. So Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. We're signing out now. Peace, everyone. Take care.